Welcome to Workshop Wednesday with MeasurementMarketing.io. We are going to be talking about what's new for August 2023. Welcome. My name is Julie Brody. I've been teaching measurement marketing since 2017 and the lead account manager for all of our dedicated measurement management clients over at MeasurementMarketing.io. And uh, as you'll see, I absolutely love Looker Studio Building Dashboards because I have some fun surprises for you here in just a moment. And for those of you that are Measurement Marketing Academy members, you have seen me back there along with our amazing team of instructors in the Measurement Marketing Academy back there in Ask Instructor or as teaching the courses or the workshops like this one. So if you are an Academy member, we'd love to hear from you. So reach out to Ask Instructor or reach out to us in the winner circle and say hi. I'd love to hear from you. So as you go through any of our workshops, any of our courses, we remind you of the one thing. So that means don't try to grab all of the little golden nuggets you're going to get today. Make sure you get one thing, take it, make it your own to come watch the video again. I promise there'll be something else that you'll enjoy. So let's go ahead and get started with what's new for August 2023. So before we start, we are going to go through this amazing thing called the measurement marketing framework. So if you've seen this before, that's awesome. If you've never seen this, we do have an entire free course on going through this. And so um, I'll tell you how to get to that in just a moment. But here is the measurement marketing framework. You start with your plan, build and launch those three steps and you go from marketing in the blind, kind of not knowing what's working, what's not like just kind of be really confused and frustrated to confident and knowing what's working and what's not. You're able to grow your numbers. You know what button to push, lever to pull to get the result that you want. And to do that, you plan, build and launch. And in your plan step, you're going to have questions, information and action. Not sure what those means. Again, we have an entire course for you. Then you have results, traffic and story for your build. And then your launch, you listen, forecast and optimize. That's the magical thing. And you go through it over and over and over again. It's a system that you're able to use to help you again, go from marketing the blind to being able to grow those revenue and profits reliably. So let's go ahead and dive in to what is actually going on with our what's new. So let's go ahead and talk about Google Analytics 4. So here we go. I'm going to pull this over. All right, we are inside our Google Analytics 4 property. So what are some of the things that are new? Well, one of the things that we are able to do now, and we're just going to come into any one of these little reports. And one of the things we can do when we customize, uh, customize, that was a hard word to say today, customize our reports. We do have options now with metrics that are more of the e-com metrics like item and all these other things. If you see it grayed out, it might just mean like you have something here. It doesn't like, it doesn't want to work with. So you might have to remove some things and stuff like that. And most likely, obviously this is not a good example for all the first source and stuff like that. But all of these e-com terms are now available to use in any one of your reports that you want to use. But again, if you'd see it grayed out, it's likely something in here is causing that. Um, the next thing that is new is this little guy right here that we now have audience reports. Now, um, this morning and yesterday, this was blank. Like there was nothing here. There's nothing here. Um, and so if you see that, just give it a little time. I didn't do anything special. It was just maybe time and it finally showed up. So this is, um, technically released uh, about a day or so ago. Um, and so it's still new. It might be rolling out. Um, and so this is using the audiences that are teaching account. And what we're able to do is see these audiences over time. If we wanted to filter by specific audiences or compare audiences side, uh, side by side or kind of in a spreadsheet format, it'd be fantastic. What you can do with this is you can very easily, you know, have an audience that is looking at sales page A and then sales page B or funnel A, product A, all these different comparisons and very easily see what's going on here. Something else that you're able to do now too, is I want to click and customize the report. I'm just going to show you in case you haven't seen it yet. We're going to go to metrics and then we're going to go type in conversion rate. There's this new thing that is really easy to add session conversion rate. Now, I don't know about you, but I like to see my conversion rate really close to my sessions. And we can also add in because it's audience report, we can add in 
conversions as well. And let's go ahead and pull that next to there. We can apply and we can save and we can save changes. Let's go ahead and do it a new report because I want to show you how to do this. We're going to say custom A-U-D-I-E-N-C-S audiences. All right, so now we have our conversions. We can see the generate lead, which we literally just set that one up recently, and we can see a conversion right here. So again, it's a teaching account, but it, let's say we pretended we had numbers here. We'd be able to easily compare the conversions as well as the conversion rate for that session on here. Um, and you can do the exact same thing on your source meeting reports too, which is super useful. So right now we can't really see where we're at in the world of GA4. So what we're going to do is hit the back button and hit this back button. And we're going to discard just because we want to go back into our reports and go into our library. And this is where we, our report for custom audience is. So let's say I want to put it in Mercer's report sandbox. All we're going to do, and this is in other courses inside the Measurement Marketing Academy. Um, so if you want to know more about that, it's in when Google Analytics for basics, you learn this as well as beyond basics. So we're going to look for custom audiences and we're just going to drag this guy over there. And so now Let's save changes to current collection. We're now we're going a little bit fast, but I just want to show you how many different things you can do with this as well. And so we have this. And so now we have easy access to our custom report that we have here. Um, and just a quick little reminder, you are able to go through and build your explorations with a funnel exploration. And when you are building your funnel exploration, you let's make sure we're on a funnel you have this option to save as a report in the library and that's exactly what this is and we've covered that in a previous what's new but there's lots of things you do and so i encourage you encourage you to go through and poke around inside the reports um, inside the explorations because every month there's something new um, and so just take a look at that and definitely go back to the academy and watch those courses and watch the other workshops we're constantly updating you there and one final little update about audiences if you use google ads um, you now have easier access to those audiences and so um, encourage you to learn how you can build those audiences again those are back there in academy if you need to learn more about that so that is your google analytics 4 updates let's go into your tag manager updates so there isn't really anything inside a google tag manager that we want to cover there's like if you're have uh, set up server side like maybe say six months a year ago definitely go through because server side has had a lot of improvements this spring and this early summer there hasn't been anything in this past month or so um, but just as a friendly reminder to always go through and search your gallery for some sort of pixel or anything that whatever it is a tag or a variable just keep up to date with what is new and available because you never know when something um, is uh, new to you uh, if you've been watching or what's news for a while it was actually live on this call that finally someone came up with a TikTok pixel and I got really excited because setting up TikToks uh, TikTok conversions were extremely annoying and uh, frustrating and so so happy that this showed up and so just always go through and search and look for these templates and it can definitely make your life easier if you find something for yourself Next up is Looker Studio. This is what I've been waiting to show you and I'm super excited. So let's dive in. So um, let's go. All right, so for our Looker Studio update, there's lots of different changes that are happening to some of your different charts, mainly the line charts time in time series bars, um, these kinds of charts. And so the way you find those uh, additions is selecting the chart, 
um, and then go to the style and just encourage you again to poke through and see what's new, what's changed um, and play with them to see what it does to your data and what you're able to do with that. So um, just kind of pay attention to those and always look kind of what's going on here. Um, as you can see that there's lots of different opportunities and what we want to do with our dashboard is always make it easier to get to the action. Our dashboard should be actionable. They should help users get in, get out and go take action. And so what type of these tools can do with this, it can really help us see that action. So this particular chart is using a reference line and it's technically using three reference line. And these are not uh, new. I'm just showing you one way, one way that we can do it. And I left them named as reference line. However, this little thing could change like this is a goal or whatever it is. And it could change that there um, if we wanted to. And then this is the new thing that I'm really excited about and Mercer really, really, really likes it too. Um, so we have this and it's called using a reference band. And these are all the same chart using the exact same data. Um, but this reference, so here's a reference line and this is using a reference band. And so we have one and then we have two and then we have down here three. So each one of these different colors is a reference band. Um, and what we basically set it up as is so, you know, the value is um, beginning value is 0.85. The ending value here is 0.9. So this is encourage you to go through and kind of see how this works. Um, if we wanted to add another reference band, we can click this and it kind of like squishes. But once we start doing that, so we can do a starting value of, let's say it's going to be, um, point nine. Um, and then the next value up is 0.95. So it's this top number here. And let's say that is also going to be yellow um, for that. Oh, I accidentally sc it scrolled itself down 0.9. There we are. So now we are at e yellow, green, yellow, red. And if we wanted another one, we can easily go into our style. Let's get that guy back up, come in here, add one more reference band and the value, the starting value would be 0.95. Make sure we don't accidentally scroll off of that. And the value here is one and the color we can choose is going to be red. So now we have red, yellow, green, yellow, red. And so we can see how it's trend trending over time. I'm going to go ahead and change our date real quick so we can see more of a story. And this is actually using the Google demo data. So if you want to play with this, you are more than welcome to as well um, and kind of see how it works with this large amount of data. And so what this shows us is like, hey, we were doing, you know, kind of in the good and like a little almost too good. And you might be wondering, like, well, how can you be too good? Well, that could be meaning you need to increase your traffic. Maybe there's not enough traffic and it's just super, super warm and like, okay, let's get some more traffic in there. Or it could be maybe there's an implementation issue. Um, so that's something else that could be addressed and maybe they fixed it here or something, you know, so they, so we can do that. This next one is using an interval area. And I'm actually going to show this coming back to, let's just do a shorter range of just the past few months because it's going to be easier to see. And so we go to our style tab again, and now we're in the section of intervals. So this, and we're going to have our reference line here, reference band here. We're choosing just intervals. And yes, you actually can do more than one. You can do all of them technically. Um, might be a little messy, but we want to make it easy to read. Um, so there's a bar interval. There is a box interval. There is all of these other ones. Um, the one thing with this one as of right now, so let's go back to our area interval and see what we have going on here. So we have add an interval and we don't see another color option here. So we can't do like what we did up here. So um, just poking around and looking at things, we look at line interval 
and we do have an option to add a different color. Um, this one's a little bit more complicated because when I was going through and adding these, guess what these are? I'm literally saying, hey, give me a value of 0.9, give me a value of 0.85. So it's a little bit more complicated, but there might be a use case where this option might be a better option than this. This was pretty easy to set up as you just saw, um, but there definitely could be a use case where this could be really more useful to tell the story and take the action. And then finally, we have this moving average here um, where you can then again you use your style i chose a different metric this one's e-commerce purchases and these is the session conversion rate for the rest of those because i wanted you to be able to see it kind of adjusting over time and so we have this trend line before we had the linear exponential and polynomial now we have a moving average which can definitely be really useful to kind of see as time goes on is things are things evening out are they going growing up or down or what is what is it doing so that is what's new in looker studio and so just i take you and just take 10 minutes 20 minutes and go through all of these different charts and see what's new and see how you can tell the story in a more efficient way to help your end user get to the action faster. So what is going on with all of the other platforms? So currently this month, there are lots of other things going on with uh, the audiences in Google Ads we already mentioned. Um, and so if we see anything else, we'll definitely let you know in our upcoming What's New. Now, what's new for the Measurement Marketing Academy? We have had another successful course launch. If you go into the Measurement Marketing Academy, there is a uh, the brand new updated win course. Going to bring it over for you. We have Win the Measurement Marketing Framework and we launched Win Analytics Canvas Basics that have both of them been really well received and really enjoyed. So I encourage you to go through those as well. And then an upcoming course is um, we are going to be updating Win Looker Studio Basics this month. And then in September, we'll be going through a brand new course, Win Measuring Your User Journey. So looking forward to that with all of you. So what was your one thing? Was it all the cool chart stuff inside of Looker Studio? That definitely was my exciting thing too. So as you are going through, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We'd love to keep you up to date on all things what's new the first Wednesday of every month. And don't forget, if you want the free course for Measurement Marketing Framework, along with all kind of other free tools in our Measurement Marketing Academy toolbox for free, you can join the Measurement Marketing Academy as a Toolbox member. Uh, I'm going to give you a link. Here it is, measure.tip slash get academy. Um, if you want to join the course and all the other courses and have Ask an Instructor and all kind of the other stuff, you know, feel free to join the other option. But if you just want the free course, just hit up Toolbox and we will see you on the other side. That was what's new for August 2023. We'll see you next time.